JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for October the 27th. I am Haralambos Pistros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, lower against most of uh, the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It gained only against uh, CHF and CAT, while it was found virtually unchanged against uh, the Euro. The greenback underperformed the most versus NOX, SEC and Aussie. Now, the relative weakness of the dollar and the franc, combined with the strengthening of the Aussie, suggests that markets traded in a risk-on manner. That said, the strengthening of the yen and the weakening of the loony point otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU and US indices were a sea of red, with the negative morale rolling somewhat into the Asian session today. Although China's Shanghai Composite is up 0.10% and Japan's Nikkei slid only 0.04%, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KEOSPI fell 0.66 and 0.56% respectively. The German DAX was the biggest uh, loser, uh, losing uh, minus, uh, losing 3.71%, closing at its uh, low, lowest in nearly four months after Europe's most valuable tech firm SAP slammed almost 22% after abandoning profitability targets and warning that its uh, business may take longer than expected to recover from the damages, from the damages of, uh, the of the coronavirus pandemic. Wall Street indices fell on average 1.93% as uh, the US, Russia and France set new daily records of COVID infections with, uh, with the number of hospitalized Americans jumping to a two month to a two-month high. Adding to the wars, White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow said that negotiations over a coronavirus aid bill have slowed, although House Speaker Nancy Pelosi remained optimistic that a breakthrough is still possible before uh, next week's uh, election. With just a week before the US election, investors find it very hard to believe that any accord on further fiscal stimulus could be reached uh, beforehand. This, combined with the fast spreading of the coronavirus, keeps sentiment subdued. As for our view, we believe that market participants will maintain a cautious stance ahead of the election, as the outcome may prove determinant with regards to the market's forthcoming direction. According to opinion polls, Biden is leading Trump by over 10 uh, percentage points, but uh, the, contest is, uh, the contest is much tighter in battleground states that could decide the outcome. In our view, given that Biden has called for uh, corporate tax increases, his election could uh, prove somewhat negative for US equities, but this may not be true for stocks in the rest of uh, the world, as he may adopt a softer stance on international trade uh, than, uh, than Trump will do. In the effects world, a Biden victory may result in a slide in the US dollar, as Biden's uh, fiscal agenda is looser than Trump's. The yen and other safe havens could also slide on expectations of a better handling of international trade, uh, of international trade relations, while the commodity-linked Aussie and Kiwi could strengthen. Now, the Aussie was among uh, the main gainers against the US dollar, with its uh, traders awaiting Australia's CPS for the third quarter due out tonight and during the Asian session Wednesday. Expectations are for the headline CPI rate to have rebounded to 0.7% uh, year-over-year from minus 0.3% and for the trimmed mean one to have ticked 
down to 1.1% uh, 1 uh, year over year from 1.2%. The way that mean CPI rate is forecast to have remained unchanged at 1.3% year over year. At its latest gathering, the RBA kept its monetary policy settings unchanged, disappointing those looking for further easing after Deputy Governor Guy Debel flagged the prospect. Having said that, though, a couple of weeks ago, RBA Governor Philip Lowe said that more stimulus is possible with the options including bond buying and a small rate cut. On top of that, the minutes of the latest RBA gathering revealed that officials discussed cutting rates and buying longer dated debt which suggests uh, that other members, besides Lowe and Debel, share the same view. Thus, even if the CPIs improve somewhat, the chances for further action at the next gathering are likely to remain high, according to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve, there is a 76% probability for interest rates to be cut to zero. Market chatter suggests that rates could be cut to 0.10%, a move that is more than fully priced in. Now, as for uh, today's events, Tuesday's calendar is light. We only get uh, the U.S. durable goods orders for September and the American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for last week. With regards to durable goods, headline orders are expected to have increased at the same pace as in August, which is 0.5% month over month, while the core rate is anticipated to have declined to 0.4% month over month from 0.6%. As far as the API report is concerned, as it is always the case, no forecast is uh, available. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. At this point, I would like to inform you that there will be no daily market review video on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So goodbye, have a great rest of the week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next week. JFT, just fair and direct.